Hi, Soul Family. How are you? I am starting this right as I am because it's 2.23 as we start. And I'm not even actually really ready, but I want to just start it right at that time. And I will read to you. I know what the meaning of, is of 2.23. It's one of my favorite number of sequences to see. And it says, a healing miracle is imminent, engendered by your faith and your clear connection to one or more ascended masters who have heard and answered your prayers. Yay! Song right now, don't want to break your heart? Want to give your heart a break? I know you think it's wrong. You might make a mistake. I would... Me give your heart a break. Give your heart a break. Heart a break. However, after my dreams last night, it isn't somebody's heart that I want to give a break. <laughs> it is literally, I woke up wanting to break somebody's face. Yes, I did. Hold on. Hi, honeys. Hi. I put my lip gloss on because I told you guys I'm not able to talk. My mouth has been freaking frozen. So this helps. Okay. Yeah, my dreams were unbelievable. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is, spirit says, um, well, not spirit. Others will say, are your dreams prophetic or are they symbolic? And I would say, are my dreams prophetic or are they symbolic? Remember, I told you I couldn't really quite trust my dreams unless I could have them unfold in front of me and know that they were prophetic. So I have this dream. It goes on and on. It went from one scene to another. And quite a bit lately, what I'm dreaming of is, is um, what's going on with my clients, right? Like what I'm seeing, I'm seeing, what am I wearing? Oh, I decided I wanted to wear this, I guess. Um, and I didn't finish. <laughs> I decided I wanted something and I didn't finish. That was in my dream. So I'll see some pretty upsetting things, right? It doesn't really go with this. I don't know why I wanted it done. And, uh, and then I have a client call and, and they tell me what's going on or they give me their, their situation and I think, okay, it's them. All right, cool. I don't have to sweat it. It's not my freaking life, right? But uh, what I watched last night, I'm gonna lift this up a squirt. I know I'm never quite prepared. This thing never wants to hold steady. It wants to kind of slide. So what I watched last night in my dreams, plural, was then reiterated this morning by spirit and it was mine it was it was not my life that i was watching it's connected to me it was about me but it was somebody else's life and uh i was uh, not happy somebody was like thinking that they were gonna buy my affection buy me off um you know uh and i thought do you even know have you know clearly you've been watching and spying but have you not figured me out yet I mean, my dad took me to a safe filled with a gazillion dollars and I don't care about money. I'm not going to be taken off my path. I'm not going to be doing something that I don't agree with. Woo! Knocked off my path, right? Not even for money, for stuff. Hell no. I'm the only heir that my father has, right? There's gazillions. I don't need your money and I don't need his. And uh, so I woke up and then I, was th I wasn't I was upset when I was watching the dream. I was just, huh, wondering what was going on, who it was, that this was affecting. And I watched um, somebody under, uh, under uncover the manipulating and the lying. And uh, they lost it. And, and it wasn't cool. And it was within a family. And so, I mean, I know who they were. And I was like, wow. But I was... I was um, lucid in it, but I was very calm, right? It wasn't happening to me. It was happening there, and I was watching, and I thought, Jesus, all this stuff that I would have thought any had been revealed quite a long time ago still hadn't been revealed. So then when I watched that, and then I got up and I got it reiterated by spirit, I thought, okay, good, it's happening. But then I just got from spirit, it, it probably hasn't happened yet. And I thought, good Lord, you know, like, why am I getting things so far in advance? And, and sometimes I think it's because... It's so traumatic that by the time I have to deal with it, I have worked through most of my anger and hurt 
And uh, wow, all I can tell you is wow. Don't ever expect that, you know, I just said this in yesterday's reading that, you know, there's always somebody that's better looking than you, that has more money than you, that has a better position than you, and, you know, remain humble. And I don't think you're gonna get anywhere in your life by bribing, um, don't. And, and there was the same, uh, I think in the same reading, or was it one right before that, how I was, I can't remember, how I was saying how some people have a very difficult time expressing their feelings, and so they express their feelings by giving you things, like my mom, right? And uh, she could never say she was sorry. Ah, wow. I hope you didn't see that. I'm going to put it down. Um, obviously, in that one, obviously we're working with the shadows of Oracle, Oracle and Shadows and Light. I didn't know we were. Just picked it up. And so uh, she couldn't say she was sorry. And so she would do things, buy things, you know. And, uh, and so it didn't mean that she wasn't sorry. It did mean that she was trying to make amends in that way, but it would have been nicer if she could have, uh, because pride, you know, it, it causes a lot of breakups. It causes a lot of people not coming back together. It causes a lot of unnecessary pain and distance and hurt and uh, misunderstandings. And that can be so easily remedied if somebody just dropped their ego. You know, my mother and, and grandmother didn't speak the last 10 years of my grandmother's life. My grandmother died with them not speaking. And uh, be, they were both so proud. They, they weren't going to give in, either one of them. And in, in truth, I mean, I, I could see both sides. But, I mean, my dad even tried to get my mom to talk to my grandmother. He got her on the phone, and my mom was just too bloody stubborn. And uh, so I kind of went through that, too, with my mom, right? But I was always the one that went. I was, I was always end up... Um, I'm not looking at these, so I'm just putting them down when they flip out. I'm a uh, song right now, I'm bad in love. Yeah, well, you know, that's not your excuse. If you're, you know you're bad at something, then get better at it, especially something like that, right? So I uh, went through the same situation, but I was always the one who would apologize, even when I didn't do anything wrong, because it was like, you know, otherwise no one's going to talk to anybody. And it was that way our whole life, right up until the time she died. And we were constantly in oil and water, you know, loving. I know my mom was proud of me. I know she loved me. Um, but she wanted to control everything. And um, I wasn't going to let her do it. But as I said, I didn't know she had cancer the last two years of her life. And she was dying and was very, very miserable. And I uh, was very upset when I found out um, the night before she died that she was dying. <laughs> the night before she died. So, uh, gosh, there's so many cards that have flipped up. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have that last one. I'll ask. Am I supposed to keep this? Yes, just keep it. Okay. Um, so, anyway, I didn't let her go. I, I went um, again that night again to talk to her. And it was the last night I saw her alive. And I found her the next morning and I held her the whole day until she died in my arms. And if I hadn't have, I mean, I've never had an ego. But if I had, I would have not had that last night with her. My daughter and my grandson would not have seen her that last night because I brought them with me. And I wouldn't have found her. I, I, and as it was, it took me years to forgive myself for not understanding or not knowing that she was so sick and not being there more than I was. And I was there, but she just made it so difficult for me. Um, and I asked spirit. I said, I, I kept saying, I wish I could have this over again. I wish I could do this again so that I could take care of her. And that's when Lily came into my life. I'm telling you guys a story I know a lot of you have heard. But my cat, uh, my mother said to me and to many people that she, when she died, she wanted to come back in my house as a cat because she knew I would baby her and take care of her and treat her like a princess. Her license plate was princess of quite a lot. That's what it said. That's how she lived her life and she was. And uh, Queenie, actually, we called her, and she called me Fairy Sherry. She would ring a little bell, and Fairy Sherry would go do whatever she needed her to do. <laughs> so uh, um, I found Lily several years after Mom died, uh, many years after Mom died. She's been dead for 10 years now, I think. And uh, I blocked the date out of my mind. And... Um, I got a message from Spirit that someone in my 
someone that I loved was coming back from spirit and they were gonna come back into my life in the form of an animal or another human. And I thought, well, I'm not having any babies and my daughter's not having any more and my son's not, I mean, I don't know, you know, I, I assumed what, you know, it would be an animal, I just did. And when I found Lily, it was just, just a few days after I got that message and it only took me a day to realize that that was my mom, <laughs> my mom. And I went through the whole sickness with Lily. She had been through a lot of trauma and I loved her so much. And I got those two years back. I did exactly what I said I wanted to do with my mom. And Lily was the sacrifice. That's why she came into my life. I guess spirit just guided one that was at that level. Anyway, be careful what you wish for, because you might get it. That was the most horrible thing I've had to go through. I saw some videos of her this morning, Lily. Princess Tiger Lily. And uh, if you guys have known my that little, little house that I was, the tiny home that I wanted to purchase in Idlewild that my mom led me to, I kept being shown the color, the tiger lily flower color, right? There were so many things that led me to this little place and then I get there and the house is that color and the view of the rock that I would sit on, the rock that I would go to, that I, my, my inner compass directed me to one day when I was gonna do our reading is Lily Rock, that's the name of it. And detach. Detach. Song right now, I would got used to being someone that you loved, and now the day light turns into nighttime, and you're not here to help me through it all. So, and this song is about that. I'm looking at a hummingbird right now. This song is actually about that, about somebody who allowed their, some, themselves to let, let somebody into their life, and they loved them, and, and they died. And they got used to him being there, and they're no longer there. But what's so cool for me is the relationship I have with my mom now is the best relationship I've ever had with her. She shows up in all my dreams. Um, she's given me very important information and she's asked something of me. And she's, um, she knows me, right? Who would know me better than my mom? And she knows how I would react. She knows how I feel about liars. She knows how I feel about honesty and integrity and morality faithfulness and uh, she knew something was gonna happen in my life and uh, she advised me to not listen to my higher self about this particular instance and we have been getting message after message in the last few days about that um, and that was um, when you get this particular message, it's called listening to wise counsel. And when you see rain or the color green predominantly makes itself known to you, whatever it is that you are planning on thinking or doing or saying, they're saying don't. You don't, don't listen to your higher self at that time. Heed wise counsel because there's something that you don't know. There's something that you don't understand. And I got a message this morning also from Spirit after I was shown what I was shown and they said, be very careful, you about your fiery personality, that you don't react um, the way you, you would. There's something on my glasses. Please tell me I didn't ruin them right, brand new ones. Um, don't do what you would normally do. You would normally, you know, take a stand or you would normally say this or, you know, this would be your response. So um, here it is again for me, right? After I watch what I watch, like I said, I didn't feel like uh, I wanted to take somebody down, take somebody out. I definitely would have cut them off forever. Um, it would have been one of those detachings, right? So I'm supposed to detach emotionally from the situation so that I don't react, right? You want to be the action, not the reaction. And then I watched in this dream as well and I and, and thought about what my mom said to me and then I thought, wait a minute, I now have watched somebody else who is in Paris with their family and what I watched in my dream last night was actually an interaction between that family and I thought to myself, wow, I, I had this dream seven years ago where I met my mom in Paris, right? And I hadn't seen her in forever. And uh, there was a birthday present waiting for me on the bed. 
and I looked at it, and, I, and it was my, had my, mother, my mother's writing on it, and I thought, that's not possible. She's not here. But see, when I'm having a dream like that, I am also a part of that dream. Even if I am literally watching somebody else's life, I'm also there. So I'm trying to incorporate me into that dream. And, what, and so I'm thinking, that's not possible. She, she can't be here. She's dead. And so I went running down. The, I was way up in a high. Uh, I felt like I was up in. It's weird because I, I don't like Paris. I, I don't like it at all. I've been there with my mom and I didn't like it there. I felt the people were very incredibly rude and I couldn't wait to get out of there. And um, oh, there's something in my glasses. It's bugging me. That's a message in itself. So uh, anyway, I ran down the crowded streets and I saw her sitting on the bench right in front of Notre Dame. And I didn't, I thought, okay, I'm not going to let her see me because if she sees me, she's going to run. And so I finally get to her and she looks up at me. And the reason I believe that she's, it, it's me, I mean, unless I'm dreaming in somebody else's family, she said, my beautiful girl, and she put her hand up to my cheek and she was sitting on the bench and she looked young and healthy. And I said, where have you been? Because at that time when I had that dream, this was only, what, three years after she died, and she used to be in my dreams all the time. She'd show up and, you know, all the time she was there. But she hadn't been around for a while. I think I did. I think I wrecked my new glasses. What a bummer. I just got these back. I did. Right in the middle of where my eye is, too. Scratch. Um, so I uh, said, where have you been? And she says, I've been traveling all around the world. I've, there's so many places I want to see. And I was like, nice, you know, leave me here. And so as I was talking to her, I watched this girl with long, dark hair, like me, and this guy go running by. And he had a German accent. He never spoke. But in my head, I heard that he had a German accent. And he went, and he went running by. And they were, she was giggling and he was smiling. And she ran after him. And I said, she shouldn't chase him. And my mom said, she loves him. And I said, I know, but she shouldn't chase him. And obviously that was something that I had learned, right? And uh, she looked up at me then and she, and, and, and it was funny because I was connecting something in my head as I was watching them. I looked at her and then I looked at the girl and I thought, oh my God, it's my mom. That girl's my mom. And that's my dad. It's my stepdad, right? And he's German. And she then said to me, don't do what I did. Don't push him away. He's, he loves you. And I knew what she meant because of something that happened between my dad and her. And she didn't forgive him. She wouldn't forgive him. He tried several times and she wouldn't forgive him. And so he married someone else. And then she, uh, they, they were still in love with each other. And... They loved each other until she day, day, she, day she died. He was, loyal, he, he, he was loyal to the person he lived with because she truly loved him, but he never stopped loving my mom. And he just felt like he couldn't leave that person that was loyal to him and because she hadn't done anything wrong, you know? Anyway, it was awful. And my mom died loving him and never ever getting him back again. So her saying to me, you know, don't do what I did because of her pride she couldn't drop her pride. And I thought this is really interesting because yesterday we spoke about ego and pride and I was looking at it in a different way. I was saying, you know, if, if you've done something wrong and somebody comes to you and, and they, you know, or they don't, right? Remember I said ego can cause a lot of things to happen. But what if they do come to you and you can't let go of your pride? And I would think, is it pride or is it, you know, your, your, your honor, your integrity? Now listen to what I said. My mom knows me. She knows what matters to me. She knows what my boundaries are, what my rules are. <laughs> and what did I say yesterday? I hate rules. I hate rules, especially the ones that hurt animals or other people. Some rules should be broken. I said that, right? So all this stuff's going through my head. And, uh, and then I thought to myself, maybe it wasn't me. Because what I was watching in my dream last night was playing out the same story about what I was being shown, but it was someone else. And they, and I thought to myself, wow, I know what you're doing to me. I know what you're doing to me. That person hurt me really, really badly. And you. I saw what they did. I watched it seven years ago before they did it. And now they're 
coming to you and they're saying they're sorry and you are not going to forgive them. Because how could somebody love you and do that? How could you do that? I found you on your knees and I put you back up on your feet only to find out that you took advantage of me. How could you do that? And I didn't even find out from you. Someone else had to tell me, right? And I said yesterday that I was talking to the king. I was talking to this person, the lion, right? And uh, that person had a very high position of authority. And I was just nobody, really, right? And yet that person listened to me. They came to me for information. I knew that they had. I knew that they were the whole time. And uh, they listened. And what was interesting is because they weren't, they didn't come to me as the, who they truthfully were, they had to kind of shut their mouth when I lost it on them, right? They couldn't give up their undercover act. So they listened. It's kind of like a forced audience. And so it goes around and around and around. So now, was it me that watched that person's life? Or was it me seeing ahead of time what's coming for myself? Or is it me ahead of time seeing what's coming for somebody else and I'm going to be the person that says to them, forgive them? Right? You know, it doesn't mean you have to have them in your back pocket, but forgiveness allows for a healing to take place, doesn't it? So that everybody can move on. Otherwise, you know, you hold on to that anger and blame and nobody moves forward. And then another thing that I watched in that, you know, what I watched in my dream that I didn't understand until Spirit showed it to me this morning was, wow, it was you all along. All of it. <laughs> Mirrors. It was you all along, and uh, you did that because you wanted to control me. You didn't like my independence. And so you sliced me down to, down to the, you figured you were just gonna cut me down, boom, 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 and, and see me on the ground, and you liked it. You liked doing it, you liked me down there. It made you feel good. And now you've come to an understanding of what you've done, and now you're coming back. Song right now, Mirrors. with your hand in my hand. There's no place we couldn't go. Put your hand on the glass. I'm trying to pull you through. You gotta be strong. I don't wanna lose you now. I'm looking right at the other half of me. A vacancy in my heart is a place that you now hold. Show me how to fight for now. I tell you, it was easy coming back to you. Once I figured it out, you were right here all along. So it's like you're my mirror. Do you see the face? The bear? I couldn't get any bigger with anyone else beside me. Now it's clear as this promise that I'm making two reflections into one. You're my mirror. Mirror staring back at me. Look at that reflection. They're all the same reflections, right? It makes, and, and it's the bear. And I said yesterday, somebody was a bear and they were a pig. One side of them was a pig and one side of them was a bear. And I think about mama bear protection. I think about the state of California, somebody that works for the state of California. I think about a pig being a cop. I think about a pig being an asshole. I think about pig is abundance and wealth and prosperity. I think about maybe the pig was your year, the totem in your Chinese New Year. And then I was told this morning, bear is your totem for today. So we're gonna look at bear totem. I'll give you your items to choose from and, uh, and then we'll move forward, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this. So this morning, I, I told you guys I haven't been able to wear my moonstone for weeks and weeks because it burned my finger, right? So finally I was able to put it back on my, my, my finger and in one night it burned me again. In one night, that dream, it burned me again. I watched it, wow, and it burned me. It burned so bad, I had to take it off this morning. And what's interesting is my mom's ring, this is my mom's ring she gave me, it never burns that side of my hand, no matter, because people say, oh, it must, something must have got underneath your skin, under your ring, right? And, and like some kind of a chemical and it burned it, no. 
Nothing gets under this and burns it, right? Nothing. It's this ring. It's the moonstone that burned me. So I, I was trying to figure out what fingers to put it on what, of my hands, right? Certain rings fit certain fingers. And what ended up happening is these ended up in a, all together. And it's like, what I said in my head was, like this one is adjustable, <laughs> flexible, I'm thinking. This one can adjust and can go on any hand. I mean, any finger that I want it to go on, but I want it there, right? And I said, I, I, I lost my, my turquoise ring. Somewhere in this house, I lost my turquoise ring. And the turquoise is my soul color, it's my tribe. It's my tribe color, it's my, um, my Native American ancestry from past lives. It is a sacred stone to me, turquoise. And I lost it in here and I said, I want my turquoise back. I kept saying that I want my turquoise back. Why is not why is it not here? It was a color that my bedroom was painted when I was a little girl. And my I had a, an antique brass bed that my mom painted turquoise. It's always been my favorite color. It's my soul color. And when I, it, it fits this finger. It doesn't fit any other finger. It has to stay there, right? And so, but this is the only finger that the other finger, it, it will fit on. And so I'm looking at it and I said, the moonstone and the turquoise are battling for, for space. They're battling for the same position. And I thought, that sucks because they don't have to battle. And that's what I watched in my dream. And that's what I watched this morning, that one of these, instead of acting like a wolf pack, instead of acting like a team, they're battling for position of authority, right? I don't wanna be your boss. I don't wanna be in control of you, but you will never be in control of me, ever. Now, in a wolf pack, there's an alpha male and there's an alpha female. They are powerful together. They're a team. They recognize that one ha is better at this than that. And if this one gets tired, that one takes the lead. There's always one. They're both cap just as capable. That's a powerful team. That is a power, power couple right? But they were battling. There was a battle. There was a competition going on that should never take place because the finger that I want, the one that I wanted to stay on my ring finger, this is love. Love doesn't have a battle go on between the turquoise and the moonstone, right? They need to coexist. So right now I'm forcing them all to coexist on the same, same hand. And it's funny because on this hand, I got my mom, right? That's the fire opal, that was her ring. Then I've got Ganesh, Lord Ganesh, the obstacle remover, and then my mom's ring. This is all unconditional love on this side, right? And I looked at this and I laughed and I said, well, that packs a punch. I mean, that would freaking hurt, wouldn't it? You wanna talk about brass knuckles? When he comes, he comes with crystals in his hands. Yeah, well, when she comes, she comes with crystals in her hands too, and hers pack a punch, right? And she's not taking those off. And I thought, I'm gonna put all three together on one hand and they would learn how to co cohabit all together. Nobody is over another. They're all equal. And for people who think that there has got to be this established authority that somebody is in charge, you know, that's religion. That's what religion taught. That's what I was taught my whole life, that the, the woman should be in subjection to the man. And I was, you know, he was very abusive, beat me up. And I fought back. I was covered in bruises for 10 years. And uh, we went to counseling. It was the last time that we were together. And he knew that they were gonna put me in my place and I was gonna be finally told that I was not behaving appropriately. So he asked, or they asked, it was a couple we went to, a man and a wife, <laughs> team. And they said, um, so what is the problem here? Of course, he spoke and he said, she's not in subjection to me. Why, my wife is not in subjection to me. And so he asked what, what the story was. He told this whole thing and they asked me, they took him, they, they swapped, right? She talked to me, he talked to me. And then they came back and all they said, they said, we have a mutual, we've come to a mutual decision about something we would like to impart with you, some knowledge we would like to share. And they said, what you consider subjection, the world would term domination. You dominate her. She's covered in bruises. She only fights with you because you're trying to control her. Why do why well she, I just don't want her to leave. I don't want her to leave. If she's gonna leave, let her go. Remember, I said she shouldn't chase him. She shouldn't chase him. Let him go. He wants to go, go. Right? You don't try to control somebody. And especially somebody who's had abuse and has been controlled. I have that in my family, right? My father was very controlling, my mother was very controlling, and I gotta tell you, 
I have grown and I, I got this morning, are you, are you learning how to um, give up some of your control? And I thought, I got no problem, you know, compromising on things. It doesn't have to be my way or the highway. It's funny that people look at Aries people and they assume something about us. I had a friend who, funnily enough, he's a Leo. And uh, every time we would go to do something, he would say, you know, what do you want to do? And I would say, I don't know, what do you want to do? Whatever you want. He never knew. He never had an idea. So I said, okay, well, let's go here. Let's go there. So then this one day, and he was a little annoyed with me because he actually liked me. And we met on a dating app. He liked me and I was just friends. That wasn't going to be more than that. And so that kind of, a, that was always an, already an annoyance, right? So one day we said, I said, oh, let's go, blah, blah, blah. And he said, he, <laughs> we were walking along the beach and he stops. And I turn around, I'm like, where, do you, where was he? he? Like, I'm walking ahead, right? I was looking at stuff that was going on in the, in the water and he's like way back there and he's not, and he's not moving. He's like this. And I said, what's going on? He goes, I don't want to go there. And I said, okay, where do you want to go? And he goes, I don't know. And I said, okay, well, what do you think you want to do? And he goes, just like that? And I said, what do you mean just like that? He goes, you're not going to be mad if we don't go where you want to go? And I said, no, I don't care where we go. I just want to go somewhere. You can never decide on anywhere to go. Somebody's got to make a decision. And he's like, wow. And I said, what, what are you saying? And, and he thought that I had to have it my way or it was the highway, right? And I'm like, I don't care. We can go your way, we can go to my, we can go just, let's just do something. Somebody make a decision, right? So sometimes you assume things and you're incorrect. So the items that you're gonna choose from, one is going to be the Ar Aragonite. I think it's called Aragonite. Argon, Arg Aragonite? Hmm. It's actually a, 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 um, a compound made of crushed crystals and it holds, um, it, I, char I charge it in the sun and it holds energy and it's a, um, it's a protection. Um, I think it's argon, it's got organite in it anyway. So this one's in the shape of a heart. So it's charged with a lot of crystals that hold a lot of healing energy and it protects me as well. Boundaries, boundaries are very important for everybody, right? So there's one, that's gonna be earth element. And then I'm gonna use the, um, just cause I keep looking at it, I'm gonna use my beautiful black kyanite. And can you see, this is my, um, this is my cormorant. I just saw one while flying across the water, that's why. This is my cormorant. And the cormorant says, don't work for somebody else and have them keep the proceeds. And you know, they, they are a bird, they're a diving bird. They're a, Look, on this side, it looks like an eagle. Bald eagle with the silver head, right? Cool. Hmm. But anyway, they fishermen put a ring around their neck and then they send them down. And the ring stops them from swallowing what they catch. So it's about not working for other people and having them keep the spoils and you get nothing. Right? You work, work, work your ass off and you get nothing for your labor. Spirit wants us to work for ourselves when at all possible. And it also says that you will dive down under your emotional waters and you will emerge safe, safe and sound because that's what you've got in you. I rescued um, a cormorant that was tumbled in the waves at the coast six, seven years ago. Look at the crystal. Oh, you, I wish you could see. Oh, you can't. The, the, the sun's on, on it down here and it's just sparkling. It's what's so cool is when kyanite or when um, selenite or desert rose breaks, the crystals sparkle. So people, are, I have to be very careful. I have this in a little cotton holder because I, do, I don't want it. It's brittle, It'll, it breaks easily. It's delicate, it's tender, it's fragile, right? But, but it's so beautiful where it's cracked. So sometimes you think, you know, you're broken, I'm broken, it's part of me that has done this or I'm this way or whatever and I'm good, good. Because that's what, whatever breaks us down is what makes us, you know, clean up what doesn't work and lets the light in and, and helps us build ourselves back stronger. So I've been thinking too much. Please help me, the song is saying right now. So then the next item we're going to choose is this piece from Sedona that I got. Um, it was where I did the last reading when I was there. Uh, there was a giant sphinx and there was a little Danny DeVito. It's what the, the, mountain, the rocks looked like. This giant sphinx was looking at Danny DeVito. But Danny DeVito, if you remember the, the, the series Taxi, he was the boss. He was a short little fat bald guy with a big mouth. And he was in control of everybody. He was 
bossy. He was, he was a bully. And I was looking at this big, beautiful giant sphinx. And I said, who are you? The, are you the giant sphinx that doesn't remember who you are? Or are you the Danny DeVito? <laughs> and this was one of the little crystal chunks that was lying on the ground there. So this is a sacred Sedona rock and it's covered with what's interesting. The color of crystals are dark crystal and, and like a clear white crystal, dark and light together. I just like it. I see an emperor angelfish on this side. Do you see it? There's its eye. That's its little face with its little mouth open there. And that's the little shape. Emperor angelfish. So the emperor angelfish will be... That's interesting. I heard air element. Okay. And song right now will never be far apart, maybe in magazines, but you'll always be my star. And in the dark, you can't see shiny cars. With you, I'll always share. When the sign, I told you I'll be there forever. Said I'll always be your friend. I took an oath and I'll stick it out to the end. Now that it's raining more than ever, Know that we'll still be together. You can stand under my umbrella. Unicorn, the Rasta unicorn. I should have made this earth signs, earth elements, because it's made from wood. It's a pencil and I think it's so freaking cool. It reminds me of Sammy, Sammy the unicorn. So we've got this one. So if you are earth elements and you are air elements, you must be fire elements. Wow, is Sammy me? Interesting. And then that's it. Who did we say this was? Water, I guess it's a water bird. Wow, okay. So that's it. And I know we've gone a whale, while, a whale, hmm, a whale. Follow your soul's path, says the whale. Um, bear totem is what I was shown this morning. So I like to go to the spirit animals because they have a, a personal message from the bear. Let's see, it's not that one. And there's, there's two companies called spirit animals, so make sure you get the right one. It's not that one either. Does it not, does it not happen for, is it not for this company? Hmm, maybe not. The Spirit Animals is, is, my, is the company that I normally, there you are. Okay, so I, I, I heard a few things when Spirit said to me, remem, remind, reminded me about the bear. Remember the, the cop and the bear that were together, the pig and the bear. And then I saw a wombat. Um, it's only when you can say a clear no that you can say a clear yes. Both are just as important in defining, defining what your boundaries are. Remember, boundaries. Boundaries are extremely important for everybody. For everybody mama bear protection protect yourself um, when you come out of hibernation after a long sleep right I'm thinking wake me up when it's all over at first you're kind of lumbering around and you, you kind of got to shake your head you're kind of in a bit of a fog you're not really you know you got to get your bearings you got to get more grounded right you've been sleeping a long time so another message is don't be afraid to show how powerful you are don't be afraid. I have no fear. And that's very threatening to some people, right? If you're not afraid of them. Sometimes, like, I, like I, I've had it, they, they wanted to beat me down. They wanted to break me down. I'll, they'll do it. And sometimes they make it their mission. Whatever they can do. You know, I've had people come pretending to be other people, trying to mess up my work. Send, um, I, I had fake people come on my work line. I, I knew who they, I knew they were fake. And it's very difficult to do a reading for somebody when you know what they're telling you or asking you is, is a lie. It's lying. <laughs> and I'm like, so it's messing up my head because I'm trying to do a reading for somebody. And, and I know that it's based on a bullshit story, right? It's, and then um, a lot of the time, it was just so that they could leave a message and leave a nasty comment about, you know, you know, books of just ridiculous things that she said this or she did that, which was completely a lie. 
And Spirit showed me what was happening and they told me to take a break and I did. And, and basically they just said, you know, you will persevere. You will continue. We, we will watch you. We will protect you. And when they come on, you block, go off right away. And I finally got to the point. Play, I thought, well, if I do, you know, if as soon as they come on, I realize it's them and I, and I delete them, then I'm not going to... They're gonna leave a, a bad feedback, and then I thought, no, because I haven't even said anything yet. So I would be, I would say, if you left negative feedback, how could you say that? I never even spoke to you, right? So I, I did. I started blocking instantly, block, 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 and, and spirit was showing me how they kept trying to come against me, and they were doing a lot of gossiping and talk about me behind my back, and how it doesn't matter. If spirit wants something um, to prevail, it will, right? So keep going. So it was rough, but I did. So don't be afraid to show that you're powerful. Don't be afraid to say that you have no fear of you. I have no fear of you. I mean, if spirit wants this to happen, it's going to happen. And if what you're trying to stop is something that's meant to be, that is meant to happen, again, nothing will stop it, right? Not even, not even us. <laughs> so it's about knowing when to withdraw and take the time to think things through, to, interest, to, to use your introspection, um, it's, that's the black bear speaking. Uh, and I, I was feeling something about the, um, the grizzly bear in Canada, but what I, what I showed that had been eradicated from California was the black bear, right? They had been, they were gone. So it's time to go in, right? Explore what's going on. Go down to the deep heart of the, of, of the, of of the matter, of, of your path, of your journey. What are you here to do? Why are you, why are you doing what you're doing? Why is it so important for you? Um, if you talk about the cubs, the bear cubs, and I was speaking about the babies, right? Then it's about bringing your children closer to you. So it's about connecting to the, to the young ones around you, making sure that they're safe. Um, the grizzly bear symbolism is saying that maybe you're over, overly sensitive to others' invasions and threats. So it's about protecting your space, right? It's knowing your boundaries. Or maybe you're overacting, reacting to a situation where you don't need to. You just hold your boundaries, right? The spirit bear, which I've seen a spirit bear, a baby. I saw a, ba I saw a mom with a, a spirit bear cub and a regular bear cub. And what was cool was that the spirit bear cub kept trying to come to me. It wandered very far away from mommy. The other one stayed right next to its mom, but this one wanted to come to me. And the spirit bear reminds you that we're all part of this environment and we are responsible for this environment as well. Everybody needs to do their part to stop the deforestation of the forests, to stop the fires, to stop the pollution, to stop the hunting, right? To stop everything that's, that's causing devastation and destruction to our planet. It's very important for you. And then the brown bear talks about bringing a balance and integrity to the physical world. Our mission is to bring about harmony and then you talk about the polar bear or the panda bear, but we're not going to go there because uh, it's going to take too long and we weren't focusing on that on those ones. So that just needed to come up. So I was told that I was to, the bear is your, is your totem this morning. And I thought, all right, so what I heard in my head was mama bear protection. And I, I protect the ones that I love, like that song, you can climb under my umbrella. I said I was a friend and I'll be a friend to the end, right? So that's what came to me. And I'm looking at two doves flying together, which is harmony. Okay, so we're going to move forward now. Those who chose the Organite heart, and I think it's Organite. Um, my friend Ryan made it for me. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Earth element or the Organite heart, and your message is Strange Valentine. Funny, this has been brought up so many times. This is talking about a great deal of cosmic energy is around your your life right now and it's all about healing healing especially long-term relationships past long-term relationships and that as i was saying was talking about my mom and my dad and you know what happened in my life and what happened seven years ago and and uh so for me i understand this right and this monster could be a bear grizzly bear polar bear with those fangs hanging down i would say polar bear because i know who the polar bear represents so when you look at this, this monster and this little girl, she looks very uncomfortable. He's going to come make her an offering of love. And she's like, yeah, I don't think so. Seriously? Look at you. You're a monster. And then you think of, again, the song, I was, I'm friends with a monster. Monster in my head. I'm friends with that monster. But you're thinking, 
look at those freaking claws and look at those fangs, <laughs> what that beast could do to me. And then you think about Beauty and the Beast and how the beast was just miserable, right? He was isolated because he felt bad about himself and because he hid away and he put on this very, he was cursed by somebody and he had to hide himself away because he'd become this monster. And the only thing that was going to save him was, was the love of a true, a true love. And so he kidnaps this girl and brings her into his palace and he won't let her go. First he takes her dad and, and the person traded the dad for that one and uh, let, let her dad go. So, so then she stayed with the monster and she saw a gentler side to him, even though he was very gruff and he didn't know how to behave. She taught him. I remember yesterday, one of the messages was, teach me what you like, right? So that's what she did, Belle. She taught him manners. She taught him how to behave. And, and he wanted to please her. He cared about her. He loved her. But he didn't know how to handle it. And he would have temper tantrums and blow his stack. And the people of the house, they were trying to help him too. Trying to, you know, the ones that were also cursed along with him. Um, they were trying to say, look, you can't act that way. You're not going to get her to stay if you act like that. So he, they were trying to show him what to do. And he stumbled. But she still saw that part of him, that gentle side of him. But then she heard that her father had been charged with something and, and she had to go back and save her father and when she went they found out about the monster the beast and they went to kill the beast and so she went racing back and there was another person that wanted her heart and that one was the ringleader he was he was lying he was a liar and a manipulator he was a jerk and he caused this big revolt and everybody was going to go after this one right and uh, she saw that they were fighting and this one got the upper hand, could have smited him out just like that, but he didn't. He let him go, only for that one to, to come and, and get him from behind, right? Stab him from behind. And so she thought this one was, it, she saw him fall to the ground and she ran to him and he was dying and she was crying and she kissed him. And when she kissed him, it was a kiss of true love and the curse was broken. The person had found real love and all of a sudden what was in front of her wasn't this vicious rotten monster it was her a beautiful prince right song right now haven't you heard the rumor bless your soul she's got your head in the clouds made a fool out of me and she's bringing you down my heart felt and it's cold i'm cold to the cold to the core rumor has it I'm the, he's the one I'm leaving you for. So it's kind of like Gaston, right? That idiot that, that caused all of this problem. And in the end, love conquers all is kind of the message, right? In this instance, love conquers the, it all. So it could be ma male or female, either side, right? This could be a man and this could be a female. So because Everybody has their own way of looking at things, right? And you could look like the monster to one and the other. You know, everybody sees it from their perspective and they all have reasons for being the way that they are, right? And so what you think is just incomprehensible may be what they feel as well. And of course, as you can see, the hearts are the same. And the love that the monster has for this one is way bigger than what that one shows. So I would say, just because I, I said it, don't mean I meant it. Just because you heard it, rumor has it. Somebody told a lie. Somebody said something that wasn't true. Just because I said it doesn't mean I meant it. Just because you heard it. And uh, rumor has it, he's the one I'm leaving you for. Something switched. Adele wrote the song and she said the story was about how people tell rumors and other people believe them. And they're, it's, they're not even true. Just because you heard it, just because she, so somebody was caught, right? And they weren't even loyal anyway. So guess what? Rumor has it, she's the one I'm leaving you for because I figured out who you were, right? So right now, this is about the fact that the differences that you see between you and you're like, hell no, but it's actually the differences that are actually drawing you together. Just like in the case of Belle and the Beast, nobody was brave enough to face the monster and 
she had to get past that exterior, that, that surface image that he'd created. And so she was able to write us, oh my gosh, right there. Wow, that was beautiful. Did you see it? Wow, death, transformation, and rebirth. But to have it, it just was like, I know it wasn't as close when I finally was able to turn it around, but it was right there, right as I said those words. Perfect timing. Death, transformation, and rebirth into something different, right? She was the only one that was brave enough and to, to face the monster and see the truth behind that. And she was rewarded by seeing that this was a prince and she had broken down through his armor. He had built that horrible exterior up because he had been cursed, he had been so hurt and he'd been so freaking lonely, right? So right now they're saying that these differences is what, what are, are drawing you together. You, it's like two halves, it's like mirrors, right? The puzzle piece is fitting together. There is no one else that's gonna fit together like you two. And what's gonna happen is very soon you may bump into someone, you may hear from someone, or you may just literally feel these feelings resurface, feelings of love that you never thought you would feel again, or if ever, You're, this is what's going on. So this is a pretty cool message too. Everything is happening exactly as it is meant to happen with divine blessings for everyone involved. Let go and have faith. And seven, if you stay on your spiritually illuminated path, the outcome will exceed your expectations. And two and seven together is nine. Nine is always about endings. And you know, there's a lot of other, oh, you're so close, so close. Um, it just keeps coming up against my win window. I love being up in the tower. I feel like I'm in, right? I'm in, I'm in Rapunzel's tower. I'm in Belle's tower. I'm up in the tower. Um, so, I told you that what I, 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 um, I speak of the, the numbers because of what I'm shown. I know that there's other meanings of the number, but nine says, for me, you have everything you need, light worker, in order to move forward on your spiritually illuminated path. Stop procrastinating. It also means wisdom and responsibility. It's, it's about service. It's, it's so light worker, right? It represents an earthly lesson, which is interesting because that is forgiveness. So it talks about selflessness and compassion. Wow. So selflessness and compassion, learning a lesson, forgiveness, right? She forgave the beast and she was blessed. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Clear your energy right now, right now. Okay, so right now we need to clear our energy. So we're gonna hold on to the selenite tower. <laughs> selenite is cleansing and charging. It doesn't need to lean on any other crystal to hold it together or to charge it or to cleanse it, but other crystals obviously are charged and cleansed by being in its energy. So let's clear our energy. We ask for Archangel Michael. I didn't ask for a blessing on this reading, so I'm asking, I guess that's what happened. Something probably came in. Um, correct for neutrality. Father and Archangel Michael, can you please ask that a shield of protection, first a clearing, take away whatever came in, take it away and put a shield of protection around on this, on this reading and uh, stop anything that's coming in from the computer, from the phone, any of that energy directed at me or towards this reading so that it is not bumped off course and in the wrong direction. Thank you. All right, next message for the ones who chose the Oregon, Oregonite heart. It's gonna be a long reading. It may not. It may not, it may speed up after this. They treasure you like, they treasure you like no other. They treasure you like no other. And one more, correct for neutrality. So I haven't put Sammy's um, crystal collar back on of him yet. I did make it smaller for him last night. And I have another bracelet that I made for myself, a diffuser bracelet, and I hang them over uh, I hang them on Archangel Michael's neck. They look pretty cool hanging on his neck. <laughs> one, this one, the bracelet looks like it's um, like a lay, like, you know, you get, um, when you get, uh, what I was thinking is like, you're awarded something, because his head's down and, and you go up and you put that a wreath around their neck, right? So he's wearing the ones of black and green. Green is love and healing, abundance, and black, of course, is protection, grounding, and it's around his neck, and it looks really cool around Archangel Michael's neck. And, Sammy's collars made small. Song right now, it's going down. I'm yelling timber. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Correct for neutrality. Make a night you won't, 
that you won't forget. Correct for neutrality. Let's make a night you'll remember. I'll be the one you don't forget. The wind's coming up. Things are shifting. That one? They are lying to you. They are lying to you. Clear your energy right now. They are lying to you. And you're wrong about my friend. They're a good person. Well, they're lying to you, right? Correct for neutrality on all levels. We just cleared our energy before we got those messages. So they care about you like no other. They're lying to you and they're obviously not your friend. You say that somebody is your friend. You're wrong about my friend. Maybe you don't know, or maybe it's completely different stories. We'll see, but I'm gonna move on at this point. So for those who chose the unicorn, which is fire element. Correct for neutrality. I said yesterday, um, how interesting that the water becomes the fire, right? So don't make a mistake in thinking that this is, is necessarily a fire sign. It can, whoever this is, this unicorn, they're coming forward with passion. They're coming, it's fast movement, right? Determination, aggression possibly. Correct for neutrality. So Sammy, is a water element that he's carrying. And I said, that's Sammy. So carrying is a Rasta. Colors of the rainbow. Interesting. Interesting. How the water became the fire. Live in hotels. It's about to go down. Swing your partner round and round. One more shot. It's going down. It's going down. Lyrics. I'm yelling timber. You better move. It's going down, I'm yelling timber. You better move, you better dance. Let's make a night you won't forget. I'll be the one you won't forget. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. The bigger the boys, a diggity dog. I have them like Miley Cyrus, clothes off, twerking in the bras and thongs. Oh my God, this is so perfect because I saw something this morning and I shared it. And it was about, this is somebody who thinks they're all that in a bag of freaking chips. And I, what I posted was about the ones who spiritual ones they aren't twerking they are oh so you're, you're looking for the wrong girl right you're looking for the wrong one hope you find someone who's brave enough to enter your storm and respects you enough to love the size of your waves i hope you find someone who will relish the calm you can have and who is eager to set sail on the expanse of your mind i hope you find someone that can't escape the love they have for you because now they have you in their very blood always reminding them that you are the only sea worth exploring but i find that i can't i don't know where it is right now if i can find it i will share it but it was awesome because i thought what an interesting what thing to say about the difference between a spiritual person and these little tarts, you don't find the spiritual one twerking, right? And so this one here, I have them like Miley Cyrus, clothes off, twerking in the bras and thongs. It's going down. She says she won't, but I bet she will. Well, bet again. <laughs> bet again, buddy, right? Sewer mermaid, that's who's gonna fall for you. Sewer mermaid, not a spiritual person. So a song right now, I need a girl like you when I come into town. And she's like, no, I don't think so. I know I'm not a side chick and I'm not here when you come into town, right? For you just, when you're rolling by. Mm -mm. This is talking to people who have, um, and who do we say we're going to? The unicorn. Okay, so this is uh, fire element. And it's talking about your sensuality. So this is either the kind of person you're, that's gonna be twerking for you and, and the one that's gonna go, right? She says she won't, but I bet she will. Oh, she might. And the only reason she would is because she's lacking self-confidence. This person is in the sewer because they have such poor self-esteem. They think poorly of themselves and they need to clean up their act. And that's the message here. You are a beautiful being. You, there's no reason for you to be in the sewer. There's no reason for you to hang out with that element, right? You don't need to hang out with that element. The number two, again, everything happening exactly as it is meant to happen, with divine blessings for everyone involved, let go and have faith. And five, there's a problem here. We've got difficulties, we've got arguments, 
We've got clashes of ideas, beliefs, systems. Things are not working. And because of that, a significant change needs to take place. And because of that, a significant change is taking place. And then two and five together, again, is seven. If you stay on your spiritually illuminated path, it will exceed your expectations. But when you're in the sewer, you're not on your path, right? There's a part of you that you hate. You could have body dysmorphia, where you, you, you see parts of your body unlike you actually really look. You know what I'm looking at constantly this whole time? Is this mark that I have in the middle of my forehead. It's so strange, it's not a pimple. I said to my landlord yesterday, it was, it was, like, it was like a red spot, like somebody, it was so odd. I don't know what it is, it just showed up. Right, it just showed up. <laughs> like a unicorn horn, it was like right there and I don't know what it is. So I take this message for myself. I got a unicorn horn, right? There it is, there's my mark where you broke it off. And I broke it off because I no longer have poor self-esteem. I no longer worry that I'm not good enough for you or anybody else. She'll, she says she won't, but I bet she will. Think again, right? Like I said, there's always someone that's better looking, has more money, is more successful, is more interesting, and more importantly to me, is awake. So it's interesting. When you can't buy somebody and you're somebody who is, has done your whole, your whole life done that, that way, what are you going to do? Jeez, you got to win them over by being honorable and standing in your integrity and being a decent human being? Wow. Wow. This is telling you, you need to respect yourself. You need to love yourself. You need to know that you are worthy of respect. You need to clean up your act. You need to get out of the freaking sewer. You need to get out of the area of the people that you're around. You need to get out of the association, the, the, the mindset. You gotta stop saying the things about yourself that you're saying and recognize that you're a divine creature. That every natural part of you is naturally beautiful. And if there's things about you that you consider dirty, well, I came for, this is where I was. This is who I was. I was this monster, but you're not anymore, right? We all get to change. We get to wake up every single morning and make a new decision about who we are and what we're going to do. Oh, then people will say, I know. Yeah, but they'll bribe you or they'll blackmail you. You make you feel bad or, oh, oh if they knew about you, you know what? Everybody gets to try to change. Remember I said that person that had done those things on purpose had cut me down to the ground and liked having it happen, enjoyed it, right? And then I told you I was speaking to that person and that person was listening. They were listening and they had to listen. They were a forced audience, but they did have to listen. And yesterday, what we got was we would be able to do something that other people weren't able to do. We would be able to reach the heart of a situation, of a person, right? So this person, and this person could have been the same person. That's how they were. Sea witch, right? Nasty. It's because they didn't like themselves. A lot of times people criticize and say harmful negative things to other people because that's how they feel about themselves. They don't feel that they're pretty enough or that they are smart enough or that they are strong enough or have enough success. Whatever their negative experiences or they could have gone been since childhood. These could have been, this one could have been raised by a narcissistic parent and that person who truly liked hurting other people and still does and never has learned. But then this one has like learned behavior. And so they've been this way to other people, but they cleaned up their act or you have the ability to clean up your act, right? The beast had the ability. Someone showed that one love and it changed them. I said to these people, I, I knew who these person, person, I said, I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why you're hurting me. I can't imagine that you are enjoying doing this to me. But if you are, you know, I can only imagine how fucked up you are. And you must have been hurt really, really bad. And you, you need love. And I am capable of having that compassion and understanding. I understand why you did what you did and how you got to be how you are. But I am not okay with liars and I'm not going to allow it to continue in my life. I wish you blessings on your journey. I hope you swim upstream because right now you're in the sewer, right? So this is about believing in yourself, not criticizing yourself. You can't do anything about the past. Even if you were this person and even if you did that to me, 
right? You can't undo the past, but you can change your future. You can change your present. Now, it could be that someone else has just said things about you, like Cinderella was treated like she was dirty, made to act like their servant, right? Like a second class citizen, and it wasn't true, but they believed this about themselves. Believe those negative thoughts, not true. Thinking of the day that you went away, the day they took my friend. I'll be missing you every breath I take, every word I speak. It's time to clean up your act. Every day we pray for you. In, your, in my heart is where I keep you, my friend. Give me the strength that I need to keep moving on for one more day. This talks about someone who's died, somebody who wasn't able to clean up their act, and they died. Don't go that way, you don't have to go that way. It can also speak about just someone, I remember the day they took my friend and I wait to the day that I'll see you again, right? Something that was done, some monster that took control of them, made things happen, hurt the situation. Right now, something beautiful has been beaten up, treated really, really badly, maybe by a sewer witch, or maybe that's just how you feel, that's how they've made you feel. Whatever it is, something or somebody beautiful has been beaten and treated like shit. The experiences of your life that have made you feel this way. This is who you were when you were little. When you were abused, nobody was there to take care of you. And that's what you turned into out of sheer self-protection so that nobody else could ever hurt you again. Now, maybe you didn't do this to somebody else but you appear this way to keep everybody away from you. So you can't be hurt again because I, I heard in my dreams, I told you, I saw a man standing up to his waist in salt water in a blue suit, his hands clenched, clenched at his sides, furious, facing out to sea. And I said, why are you standing that way? Won't that water ruin your suit? And he said, my suit will dry out. I have to stand this way because if I don't, I'll kill him. And I said, kill who? And he said, a man hurt a girl and I wasn't able to stop him. So is that what happened? Did you witness this happening and you weren't able to stop it? And I told you, I stood between two brothers and said, don't walk away. Don't, don't lower yourself to this level. This, this sea witch, this can be a man, right? There's so many messages here. You have either been an abuser, a child that was abused that now has become the abuser, or you have portrayed yourself in a different light just for sheer protection, or this is somebody that needs to go into the sewer and you need to swim up river away from that because something needs to change. You gotta get a different view of who you are this is not, does not have to be who you are. Song right now, look what you made me do. I'm with somebody new. I'm dancing with a stranger. Was somebody forced to do something by another? <laughs> dancing with one like that, right? There's a siren and then there's a, a mermaid. This is not a mermaid. This is a sewer mermaid, so that's interesting. It's not a siren, it's a sewer mermaid. So this is somebody who actually is someone that saves other people. Somebody that is able to dive down deep under their emotional waters, but they've been made to feel horrible about who they are and a lot of it comes from inside their own head it could be experiences from other people and maybe you you keep drawing the wrong people towards you because this is the image that you portray right and if you send that energy out even if it's false those are your friends show me you you show me your friends and I'll show you who you are don't portray yourself that way because that's the energy you're sending out so Understand that this might have been you as a child, but now you're an adult and you are a survivor. You have made it. You don't have to live like that anymore. 
and you don't have to continue that negative thought it's shaming from someone else, abusive men mental thoughts from somebody else, even your own self. You're very, very beautiful and very, very deserving. Every soul is, but not if you behave this way. So what is your story? I'm dancing with a stranger. I thought that, I thought you were somebody completely different. Wow, I'm dancing with a stranger. Correct for neutrality on all levels. What's the message? Is there a message in this pile? They are just getting back on their feet. Help them out. Somebody that's been through a situation like this, they're just getting back on their feet, right? Got to be gentle with them. Help them out. What can you do? Can you understand maybe where they're coming from? Is there anything that you can do to be of assistance? Correct for neutrality. Maybe they feel like they're in the gutter. I don't have anything. You know, I used to. Maybe due to somebody else's fault, they're not in that place, or maybe due to their own lack of good judgment. Whatever the reason is, they're, they're just getting back on their feet right now. Help them out. Don't be so hard on them, right? That's the compassion that comes out. Every time I see you, my heart explodes a little more. No matter what, I am here for you. Please know that. So the message... They're just getting back on their feet, help them out. And the response is, no matter what, I'm here for you, please know that. Remember what I said I was a friend. I said I'd be a friend to the end. Climb under my umbrella. I'm sorry for the way I disregarded your feelings when I was behaving like a sewer mermaid. All right. Mama said, don't give up. It's a little complicated. All tied up, no more love. I hate to see you waiting. Have to have high, high hopes. Shooting for the star. Didn't have the, didn't know how, but I, but I always knew I had a vision. Gotta have high hopes. So here we look at the emperor angelfish. I knew I was gonna be that one in a million. I got high hopes, says the emperor angelfish. Stay up on that rise. Never come down. The angelfish totem says to ask for divine assistance with every task, decision, and question. Help and guidance are always available. This is the angelfish. The emperor is the male, right? The, the emperor. The most Important acts of forgiveness are the ones that you give to yourself. Let go of any self-criticism and love yourself. So the emperor... If you think about the emperor in tarot, and I don't know a lot about, about tarot, but I know that the emperor, you think about an emperor, rules over kings, not known for being real soft and cuddly, right? Can be a bit of a control freak. Um, wants their way or the highway. Remember I said somebody wanted to control me? My dad is an emperor angelfish. My dad is an emperor. And if you're the emperor in reverse, you're bad news. You're nasty and vicious and you can do all kinds of horrible things. You would definitely become a sewer mermaid, right? So this is about acts of forgiveness and the biggest act of forgiveness is, is self-forgiveness when you recognize what you have done. And maybe this is for you or somebody in your life, right? Um, so if there's any self-criticism, you're, you're being asked to let go of that at, at this time. You need to clear your energy. You need to detach from, from that energy. There's no, beating yourself up doesn't help anybody. So are you too hot on yourself? Because yes, you have stumbled. And, but you've learned and you're able to grow. So move on is, is basically what they're telling you to do. It's about connecting also with spirit, the angelic realm being that it's an, an angel fish. You'll always have help. It's um, reminding you that the only way that you can move forward is, is by self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others. <laughs> what goes around comes around. So you might be witnessing and experiencing your own karmic backlash. I had a... Um, client that I was working with and he was losing his mind. Um, his, he was convinced that his girlfriend was cheating on him and she wasn't. And he couldn't help it. He, he, everything he saw, he created something in his mind, a different story. And, and it wasn't that, that's not what was happening. 
And remember, I kept getting in, in the, we, we kept getting in the message, we got it several times. They've got their mind on their work, not on you. They're working, their mind is on their work, right? So that's what I was saying. Her mind is on her work, it's not you, that that's not what's going on. But this person had, was, was experiencing a karmic backlash. They had been what they were accusing their, their mate of. They had done those things. And because they had done those things, it's always that way, right? You accuse the one because you know what you've done. And so you project and you put it on to someone else and he was losing his mind. And I kept saying, look, you need to stop. You know, you're, you, this is a karmic backlash. It's coming back. You're now feeling what it felt like for her, right? She didn't do this to you and she handled it differently. So you need to pull it together. You need to stop because now you're accusing her of things that she never did, but you did. You need to stop or you're gonna lose something amazing. So this is telling you right now, what goes around does come around all the way around. Whatever we say, whatever we do. When you look at this picture of these three little witches, <laughs> one of them, she's just a nasty little hoe. That one right there. And then the one in the, the little redhead in the back, she's kind of like, I don't know, right? And then this one's like, I just, just doing what they're doing. So following the crowd, right? They're helping her. She's the one who's cutting and they're, they're the cohorts. I kept getting these three that need to be stuffed into a bottle and corked. Cut away the three. And one of them could be you, right? An aspect of yourself. But whatever it is, what goes around comes around. So the message is basically, if you have done good things, expect good to come back. If you've done vicious, nasty, evil things, expect that to be revisited as well. Just like that person was getting a karmic backlash and it felt awful. I mean, it was literally, it was dreams and, and things that he was watching have happened. It was awful, couldn't handle it. Just, it was just eating him up alive. And I kept saying, look, you know, I can see even the, you know, well, this totem came to me and it showed me this, but there was like all this list of things that the totem meant and all they zeroed in on was the one thing and everything else they didn't look at, which was the whole story. That was just like one very small aspect. So right now, you are experiencing a karmic cycle. And it might be a situation that's coming back around again to be revisited. How are you gonna handle it this way? This time, what did you do last time? What's different about you at this time? Whatever it is, is it's a karmic pattern that you need to understand. You need to learn from it so that you can release it and move on from it. You don't want to keep repeating the same vicious cycle, that same situation. Oh my God, it's that same person. Oh my God, it's that same lesson that I'm gonna spend my whole freaking lifetime learning because I keep getting this again and again and again. Something that needs to be cleared, something I need to become the master of. My illusion, master of my illusion, master of my control, master of my mind. What is the lesson that I am forgetting at this time? I don't want any repeats. I don't want any repeats. I have the ability to turn something into something different. I am the emperor. I don't need to be the emperor in reverse. I can be, an emperor is somebody who's very wealthy right? In control of a lot of people, probably a, a, a business head, a company, head of a company. Um, people look up to him. They command people believe beneath them, right? Remember I said I was talking to that lion, that king. He was in a high position of authority and he had to listen to this lowly sparrow, right? But he did. He listened. Hopefully he learned something. But right now the emperor is, is who's, who, who we're looking at right now. So this could be you or somebody in your life. And they're basically saying, you need to change your approach to something. You're not approaching this situation in the right way. Something has been unjust. Something feels like it's not fair. Something is back around. Now you're looking at it. Here it is again. So memories could be memories. It doesn't have to be actually you're, you're seeing that situation again. It, just me talking about this could bring something up for you today, right? Reminding you of the good old days or the bad old days or whatever it was in the past that your memories are bringing back for you to revisit. So if this is you that has been this rotter, <laughs> this is the last time we'll talk about it. It's like, you know what? Stop beating yourself up. Make a cho choice to change the way you're behaving. You have an opportunity. You're being given an opportunity to clear something up. You're being given an opportunity to make a difference. I said that I watched somebody come forward and as I told you, there was somebody, I said, somebody needs to come forward. There's somebody that knows something. And if they speak what they know, it's going to save a lot of pain and anguish. And it's going to bring a lot of confusion to an end. But if they're too afraid to come forward or if they refuse to come forward, spirit will make sure that it comes forward anyway. It will be brought to light anyway, but it would be better if it comes to light by you. And, and 
the, but there's going to be a chaos. And the person said, so everyone's going to be mad. And I said, yeah, they're going to be really mad. But you being brave and being able to speak it up and, and, and come forward, it's going to go well for you, better for you. And because of your active bravery, there's going to be a blessing for everybody involved. Even if it does look tumultuous and, and upsetting right now, eventually when things do calm down and they will calm down, there will be a blessing for every person involved. And so the person was like, Ugh. I mean, I've had that situation happen to me several times and I've had to act in my integrity. And in the meantime, I lost out. I did. You know, I, I said to somebody that I love very much, your brother's going to take something from you, that something that was yours. He's going to take it from you. And to me, it looked as though when I, I watched it from two different perspectives. One, he said, can you watch this while I'm gone? Watch, take care of this for me while I'm gone. And then went and left, went out of the country. And while the person was supposed to be watching, they turned, when their back was turned, these thugs came in and took over the, and, and started taking over this company and doing all this bad stuff in the company. And I thought, oh, he didn't know. And then I went back. It's funny how in your dreams, right? So they took me back and I watched it. And it wasn't that the brother didn't understand or didn't realize and that they did it behind the brother's back. The brother purposely looked away. You know how you can do that? You talk about that in le legal things. You know, I, I'll, I'll just, I just turn a blind eye to something or I'll look away. I won't look at that. Go ahead, do it while I'm not looking. But it's kind of like that, right? You knew, you knew, you were part of this. And I, I knew that if by telling this person that, they weren't gonna believe me because who was I? I wasn't the brother. I didn't know if it was a fleshly brother or a friend they called their brother, but I knew that it was a big deal. Something was gonna be taken from them. They could be hurt, they could be arrested, they could end up dead, they could, I didn't know. I just knew it was gonna be a painful thing. And uh, I had to say, so I said, I would rather you be angry at me, and, but know that you're safe. That's, that is important to me. You're, you being safe is more important to me. So sometimes people do something like that and you're not aware that they've done that. You're not aware, you're, you're angry at them and you're thinking this happened. They did that, they acted this way. How could they do that to me? But you find out later that somebody did something for you. They, they were trying to protect you, they were trying to help you. So whatever this situation is, it's coming all up right now. And there will be, because of this, what comes around goes around, it's, it's a, it will come to light. So if there's something that you've done, if you've been judged by something, or if you have been with a, in a situation, in a job, or with people, and you've been forced to do something, or felt like you were forced to do something, you can, you felt like a prisoner, basically. And I told you, I watched somebody rip somebody apart, and someone watched them do it, they knew, and they were too afraid to, to go up against that person, so they watched. It was like, it's what, like that woman who watched her little dog be mauled to death, and, didn't step in and so they're beating themselves up because they, they weren't brave enough. Well, you weren't. You can't go and undo that, but you can learn from that lesson and that's why Spirit says, don't be afraid to let people see that you're brave. Don't be afraid because Spirit is here. You're not alone. These are karmic lessons that we all have and stories that keep repeating. And so Spirit says, this is a, a karmic encounter you're being faced with yet again. I've had this same lesson I have many times in my life. I finally stood up to my father, right? I, I've had it happen my whole life. Somebody trying to control me and me giving in because, and not because I was able to be walked on, I just, I didn't want them not speaking to me, right? My parents wouldn't speak to me. They would give me the silent treatment or whatever. And you, ha you can have a family like that where your father is very kind to you, very generous, very wonderful. You know, they'll do this for you, but you gotta do what they want. And when you don't do what they want, then they become very toxic and abusive and controlling. And that's why we got that message yesterday that there was somebody that was gonna come to you with an offer. And this person looked, you know, had, was, was a business person, had a lot of money and was very successful. And you were being told, listen to why, heed wise counsel. There was someone else in your family that knew something. And even though that person may have looked bad, maybe that was the bad person, but they know something. And so they come to you and they say, look, don't go there. Song right now, you just want attention, you don't want my heart. You know, the ones that, that don't want anything to do with you unless somebody else wants you, or, or you know, they just want somebody to go be, come begging after them, and so they'll do whatever they can to get your attention, but they don't want you. They don't want you. Don't feel special, right? They dish that out to everybody. They don't want you. So, right now, this is a fateful encounter from your past, and Spirit says, learn from it. 
and finalize it and say goodbye. Say goodbye. Correct for neutrality on all levels. I know that dress is karma. Regret, perfume and regret. You had me thinking back when you were mine and now I'm all up on you. What'd you expect? But you're not coming home with me tonight because you just want attention. Are you learning that? Why would you be all up on somebody if you knew they treated you like a sewer mermaid? You just want attention. You're not coming home with me. Correct for neutrality. Maybe he's saying you're not gonna come home with me like I want you to, because you just want attention. They are sincere, somebody. So maybe this one that was the sewer mermaid, right? Or the sewer monster is sincere. That's way too many. What are you doing? Somebody's trying to, is playing a game. You are the perfect balance of strong and gentle. Ah, that's, an, that's a, something to strive for, right? You gotta be both. You have to be balanced. You're divine masculine and divine feminine. You gotta be tough, but then you have to be able to be loving and compassionate and gentle. You have to have a balance, otherwise there's no point. And I was saying how I had to be the man in all my relationships since I was young, because I was the fixer. But what I needed to learn was, was my divine feminine. I needed to learn the balance between the two, right? I feel so proud to be with you. So you're the perfect balance of strong and gentle. I feel so proud to be with you. And they are sincere. Wow, that's pretty cool, right? Okay. I only went through one pile. I'll see if, oh, there's one right here. They do hard drugs. No, no. That's what I watched of this person whose family member let these, pers these people that did hard drugs is who they let into their business. No, no, no compromise, no compromise. Yes, they cheated, and yes, they are sorry. Five. Five days, five hours, five minutes, five, the fifth of the month. Could be five months. But to me, five says there's this big change that needs to take place because of the differences, because of oil and water don't mix, because things are just not working well. And because of that, a significant change needs to occur. And because of that, a significant change is occurring. So now we go to... Beautiful cormorant. I love this cormorant. This cormorant that got tumbled in their emotional waters. Got the crap beaten out of them. This one was so strong. This is a wild creature, but it, it let me hold it, carry it. I wrapped it in a blanket and gave it Reiki for 40 minutes while I drove it inland to the Humane Society. And we saved its life. Me and the people there, he did have a pebble stuck in his throat and he wasn't able to get his, he wasn't able to get his food properly. Something was stuck in his throat, throat chakra blocked, right? Not able to, to speak, not able to stand up for themselves. He could barely stand. He was so weak. He's a beautiful bird. He, I have pictures of him. He's on the rock and he was like trying to dry his wings. It was beautiful, but he would have died. And I did something that I didn't even think. You know, when you rush in, right? I'm up that 250 foot cliff. Could have been higher than that. I gotta see how high that cliff is. And I scrambled down the side of it with my bare feet, board shorts and bathing suit top and a towel. And went up and, and got, won his confidence. I had to wait, you know, let him, I had to talk to him for a while. I have videos of it, you can watch it. It's on my channel. And uh, eventually I was able to get right up and he let me, God, it was, and, and, and I, he was struggling a little bit, but I wrapped him like a baby, like a papoose, really tight, you know, like I do with my cats when they don't wanna be taken to the vet. and. Uh, Flagged a trucker down and the trucker's wife got into my convertible and we drove that cormorant to the Humane Society and made this big bear of a man come out and help him. And uh, I did Reiki the whole while there and he had his little head on my shoulder. He was almost asleep and uh, he was, they found, the, I know I've spoken about it before, so, but those people who don't know, um, I got to the Humane Society and I had to cause a big stink because I knocked on the door and the woman said, I'm sorry, we're closed at Sunday. And I said, I'm sorry that it's Sunday, but you're here, and I just brought a bird 45 minutes from the beach, and you're gonna do something about it. And she kept saying, I'm sorry, we're closed, and I threw a fit. I was crying, soaking wet, covered in sand, and I said, you find somebody. I had choice words, right? Find somebody. I've done this with, with spirit. Do something, do something. It's enough already, right? And finally, this big man came. He was huge, a bear. He came, and he was gentle, 
and he looked at me crying and you know he first he said we're closed and I was crying and I was holding the bird and his heart just kind of went Poof. and he's like oh god so he says okay and he took him inside and he came back out a few minutes later and he says you know I don't know if this if we're going to be able to do anything he, he looks pretty weak and I said no 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 he's got he's fine I mean I know he needs help but I've been doing Reiki on him for 45 minutes and he's just relaxed believe me he's fine just go check on him so he went back in and I waited outside, <laughs> pacing back up and down. I was just like a bull. I was, you know, oh my God, funny, Torian energy. And uh, finally he came back out. It was like 25 minutes later and he said, I've got him on an IV and we, we've not, uh, he, he hooked him up to fluids, right? And he said he'd had a rock wedged in his throat and because of that he wasn't able to eat his food now think about remember the cormorant that's working for another working 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 but they're demanding everything they were taking everything he wasn't able to even feed himself that's so this is don't work for other people and have them take from you and you get nothing right so he wasn't able to feed himself and he was dying his feathers were falling out and so he said we got the pebble out and uh, he goes I'm, I'm you know we'll have to see so then he, I said I'll wait so he went back in and he came back out about 15 minutes later and he said, wow, he's really perked up. He's like, God, is, he's flapping around in there and he looks like he's going to be fine. And he goes, but because it's Sunday, we're going to have to um, wait till tomorrow and then we're going to have somebody from San Diego from the animal sanctuary come, come up and get him. So he'll be taking a trip to San Diego tomorrow. And he says, I can take your phone number and name and let you know his progress. And I didn't want to know. I said, no, that's okay, thanks, because that I did what I needed to do, and I am I was already too emotionally attached, and if he didn't make it, or if anything didn't ha didn't go well, I didn't, I couldn't know, right? I just, I did what I was supposed to do. So, this cormorant's very special to me. He also represented someone else who got tumbled in their emotional water seven years ago, six years ago. So, song right now, I Don't Wanna Be Beautiful People, Violet Dawn, I love this song. You guys know the song, um, Ed Sheeran. He was made fun of when he was a kid. He had a stutter, he had red hair. Um, he was uh, bullied and abused and told that he could never, he would never mount anything and was turned down and he's freaking famous and he's amazing and he still has that be beautiful heart. And his video, he just got married, I think. I know he got engaged, but, and her name is Sherry. <laughs> Sherry. And uh, he um, said, he did this video and it's about beautiful people and they're on this yacht in Europe and you see the girls in their bikini and their six inch stiletto heels coming out with their pimp guy, you know, drug guys and all their diamonds and, and then you see him and his girlfriend and he's wearing, you know, uh, flippers and, and these fun funky board shorts, plaid board shorts or something and she's just kind of, you know, he's a little chubby and she's a little chubby and um, <laughs> he goes walking across the deck with his flippers and they did all the same things as these other people did, but they didn't act like beautiful people. They acted like regular people. They, did, they weren't affected by their fortune. There's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. It's actually wonderful if you have it. If I had a lot of money, I would definitely be doing a lot about animal, animal sanctuaries, for sure. For sure, I would, I would be all over it. Um, so if I had a lot of money, I would definitely put it to good use. So that's not the problem. The problem is how you allow it to affect your life. And he said, I just don't want us to be beautiful people. I don't want to be like them, right? So this is beautiful. I love this, this cormorant, this glorious cormorant that got tumbled in his waves. And now is probably no doubt back into his environment and doing fantastic. I don't know if you can see in the light. Let me go look close. I gotta find it where you can see with the light. Come on, I just did it. Do you see it sparkle? Beautiful. Isn't it amazing that I found that? Spirit leads me to the most amazing things. People, places, situations. So breaking dawn, <laughs> every time I see this number 23, Michael Jordan, slam dunk, right? <laughs> Two, everything's happening exactly as it is meant to happen. The divine blessings for everyone involved. And three, let go and have faith. And, uh, I also wanted to look because uh, I need to do a little bit of more, more research um, for the meanings of the numbers. Now, number three um, is always talking about the Ascended Masters for me. That The Ascended Master, probably someone that you're familiar with, like my mom, my sister, my dad, my grandma, right? My real dad, uh, my birth father. Um, they're working with you. And... Uh, 
it, it's a number of completion and creation. It's a number. It's a divine number. It's a spe it's a sacred goddess number too for women. Um, it's about creativity. People with the life path number three, very creative people. Um, and and it's it's any time that you see something three times, spirit says, pay extra close attention. If something is brought to your attention three times, they're very much making a statement for you. So I also think of, of self, higher self, and spirit, right? Some people think of the Trinity, Father, Self, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, but it's definitely talking about help from divine sources and the angels protecting you, giving you strength, and uh, it's there for you. So here this one stands. This makes me laugh because it makes me think of the other one. The, one, the, the card in the deck that I, that I, I always associate myself with this card. I'll show you her. <laughs> That's me. See how she's laying in the snow, doing a snow angel? That, that's me. Her, and she's like not impressed. I've been out in the cold way too long. My wings are freaking soaking wet. What else do you need? What else do you need before you get it, before you see, before you understand? You know it's the truth, but you're ignoring it, right? Here she is now all dried off, right? And she's still standing there like that, <laughs> right? Or he. And it's like, <sighs> okay, so we're still standing here. We've dried out our wings. Remember I said the cormorant dried out their wings and how the, the vultures stand and they, they dry out their wings? So here, there's clouds. There's still clouds. It's still, you can't really see a lot of what's going on. And maybe the, the clouds are from the falling tower. Remember, the dust is not settled yet. But there's a lot of pink in the background, which is love, right? And love is the, is, is the strongest healing energy. Love can do everything. Can heal bullies, angry people, sickness, broken hearts love can love can do wonders and so this violet angel what was so interesting is i had this deck and this card went flying off my boat off the dock and under the boat of uh, the neighbor the neighbor's boat next door that was a message to me at the time too this angel went flying off and went underneath the neighbor's boat and uh i i then it had an incomplete deck and for a long time i worked with the deck and i thought i can't do that because what if this was the card that needed to come out so today, so I had to buy a whole new deck. That with the shapeshifters as well as this. I had to buy a whole new deck because of one card that went out underneath the neighbor's boat. And the other, boat, uh, other one was a mermaid that slipped off and went underneath the neighbor's boat. So breaking dawn. So something difficult has happened. You've come through it. Two and three together is five, right? That difficult situation that needs to change. And because of that, a change is happening. So this could be the falling tower. Falling tower doesn't always have to be something awful. And in all reality, the falling tower is always good. Even if it feels to you that it's a disaster because it breaks down whatever is not been built on a solid foundation so that you can now erect something on a, on a solid foundation. So she's standing there and she's saying, okay, it's the dawning of a new day. I'm waiting for you to check it out, look around and understand that you've got a lot of stuff in front of you. The stuff is serendipity, meaningful coincidences, right? Pay attention, especially the things that happen three times. Watching a flock of crows go by. Crows are also magic and miracles, but they're thieves too. They come out of the darkness. So again, I'm seeing a change from one thing into another, right? So friendships, changes, things that you've been waiting for, longing for, are coming about for you at this time. It's you, babe. <laughs> Song, I'm a sucker for the way that you move, babe. <laughs> I could try to run, but it would be useless. It's you, babe. So maybe you felt like you've lost your way. Maybe you felt you lost your, your kick, your energy. Your, she's looking like she's exhausted. I'm looking at, at what I'm looking at is several different things here I wanna show you. I'm laughing at all of them. Cause I can, and I know that we all can relate to this. Right? I, I mean, if you just put them together, I mean, this is how I feel. Right? Started out like this. you are got all this crap happening. Storm. You got to stay cool. All the, all the lies and manipulation. And then it all comes out. Right? This is the tower here. And then this is the after tower. This is while you're going through it. This is when the tower falls. When everything comes to light, this is afterwards. Okay, so this is where we're at. And now, here's the dawning of a new day. The color is purple and, and, and pink and kind of like a deep red. So all based on your root chakra, which is telling you to get grounded, right? There's also black woven through, which is protection. 
and, and, and again, the color that I said that these three have to cohabitate, right? They're going to have to get along and nobody has to be the leader over the other. They can all live together. Now, what if this was a husband, a wife, and a, and a father-in-law or a husband and wife and a mother-in-law, right? And they all want to be the boss, but not of each other. They just need to be able to be in control of their own life and they all need to be able to cohabitate together cohabit together. Or it could just be these two that were at odds, right? That need to cohabit. And the way they do it is by staying grounded and focusing on the love, right? This raw ruby. I love this stone. Isn't this bitchin'? Love this stone. And it's adjustable. It's an adjustable stone. It's flexible, right? We have to be able to be willing to adjust. So the colors are reminiscent of this to me. And purple, of course, is high spiritual color. So the worst is past, spirit said. It has, thank God. So now you can start regaining your energy. Start connecting once again to your own personal power. I've got prickles in my right hand. It's you, babe. It, they, you know, when you get, that's energy moving through my hands and it, it literally, it's like, uh, you know the feeling when you're, you sit on your foot and it falls asleep and you try and walk on it and it, like it, it tickles so bad it hurts? That's what I feel going through my hands right now. My right hand, my power, my, my power hand. This is my dominant hand. <laughs> I've got life coming back to my dominant hand. That's interesting, right? So this is your own power flowing through you once again. Feels good because you're connecting with your highest self. And you're, when you do this, being that you're wrapped in protection now, you are grounded and you're connecting to spirit and you've got love all around you. You put all of those together, you're standing in your highest power. So you're going to start blossoming. Your intuition is going to be tapped spot on, right? Spirit wants you to spend as much time as you can. It would be good if you could get up early in the morning. My cats have been getting me up early in the morning. And if you do, so I'll do this from now on. When I get up early in the morning, Liger's usually sleeping on the patio and I don't want to let him in until the, the, as late as possible because they all want to eat right away. But, if, but it is really cool to go out on the lake, uh, like on my patio in the early morning and there's fog across the water. It's really magical. That's the time when you, the, the, the thinning of the veils is happening. And it's kind of like looking like that to me right now, right? After a very difficult time, something breaks. You've got a breakthrough, an epiphany, or maybe you've had evidence like I did last night. I watched it come to light. Now it may not come to light in the physical for a while, but I've seen it happen. I've seen somebody figure it out, a breakthrough. So that makes me feel better, right? Knowing it's, it's coming because finally the change is, is, I've seen it. I've seen the change. Now for me, I watched a lot of things happen seven years ago, but, but I watched this one face, the one who had done it all and, and they figured it out. So you're on the verge of something, on the verge, Spirit says. Song right now, we're running in circles. We're running in circles. Run away, run away, we're running in circles. We keep coming back around. I think it's time to let go. Why? Because I said so. I said so, right? I said it's time to let go, but you keep coming back around because <laughs> I think it's you, babe. Can't do it, right? So don't try to hurry it up, Spirit says, even though we want to. We want it to come now, right? Just know that what you've been asking for, you're starting to see the fresh little sprouts of life coming, oh, thank God. Right? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just say thank you. Thank you for the new beginning. Thank you for the breaking dawn. Thank you. Like it's, it's here now. Stay and understand that there's new things coming. Feed the flame, but we can't let go. You thought it was real, but it was just the sex, though. Somebody says that. You thought it was real, but it was just sex. So I got to go. So somebody may come back to tell you the truth of the situation. I watched that too. Somebody says, I got to go back. I got to go at least explain. And so I can set this person free. That may not feel great at the time, but recognize that that is you being set free so that you can go forward on your journey to something that you deserve. You don't, I don't think you know what I'm going through. Make up your mind. Tell me what you're going to do. Come to me or let it go. I did get that. That was part of the dream and part of what I watched this morning and how I started this reading. That somebody that wants to come back, they're going to come back and they're going to be bossy. And they're going to say, you've got this much time, basically. You make up your mind. And after they've put you through all of this and all of a sudden, you know, you got a time frame. And, and no, it's not working that way. So uh, one of the messages was, they'll walk away. Let them go. They'll be back. Because of you, I changed my life. I love that. Isn't that freaking cool? 
Can you imagine? I mean, that's the best thing. <laughs> that To have that, I've gotten a message that way. We've shared it before. Uh, they said, because of you have been instrumental in helping change the course of another person's life. And there's nothing better than that. Rehabilitate somebody, right? Their way of thinking. Making, that's what Belle did with, with the beast, right? Because of you, I changed my life. And look at the heart. My heart beats for you. My heart, maybe I'm alive because of you. You know, sometimes people, if they kept going down a different road, they would end up dead, remember? I said what I watched. I was so scared that that person was gonna get arrested or end up dead, or hurt, right? It's hard for me to show my feelings, says the beast. It's gonna be a long reading. I haven't had a reading this long for a while, but I guess it was needed. You can't stop the girl from going. There's people that are trying to pull off wings off of angels. Trying to pull the wings off of angels. You can't stop the girl. I'm gonna, I'm going to, to share this with you because this is my uh, banner picture song. I hate that. I remember as a little girl, my brother and my, uncle and my cousins pulling the wings off of flies and frying them with magnifying glasses and me losing my mind and shooting, they were shooting birds on the wire and my dad, I went, my cousin talked to me about that recently. He says, yeah, I remember you hysterical going to your dad saying what we'd done and he came and it was like the wrath of God came down on them and my dad said to my brother, I want you to take that BB gun, I want you to go out and I want you to shoot a bunny and I want you to skin it and I want you to eat it. And my brother was crying, no, oh, I can't, I can't. And he says, don't you ever harm a defenseless creature, ever again. Remember, I watched a girl, a man hurt a girl and I wasn't able to stop her. <laughs> so here, you can't stop the girl. Um, and it can be the boy too, right? It doesn't have to just be the girl. Because that was a guy that I saw standing there with his blue suit. I wasn't able to stop him. And he beat himself up. He was so angry at himself. Because, and, and maybe he was just trying to restrain himself. Maybe he didn't find out about it until after. Maybe he's finding out about it now as I tell the story, right? So, <laughs> Huckleberry Finn, um, I think it's this one. Oh, they're trying to shoot down angels. They're trying to pull the wings off of them so they can't fly. Oh, but she's so brave though. She's just like a tornado. She's taking us by a storm. You can't stop the girl from going. You can't stop the world from knowing. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. You can't stop the girl. They're trying to take our voices. They're trying to make our choices. So we scream loud, loud, loud. And I know you feel the lightning. It's so exciting. So here we come. You can't stop the girl from going. You can't stop the world from knowing. The truth will set you free. You can't stop the world from going. The girl from going. You can't stop the world from knowing. The truth will set you free. It's so exciting. So here we come. So to me, it's kind of like, it makes me think about people that have been sexually abused right? And they've been afraid to come forward and face their, you know, um, the ones that had done this to them, they felt intimidated by them, or it could have been physical abuse. It could have been anything and any type of control issue. And they've been afraid to deal with that one because that one was in a higher, no one will believe them. You know, they're in a position of authority. They may be, have been, you know, a captain in the army or whoever they were. And, and so spirit says, no, be a rebel start a revolution, scream louder, come together. It's like those children in Hollywood that were molested, right? It just takes one to come forward and then everybody else follows. So you can't stop the girl from going. You can't stop the world from knowing because the truth is out. They don't, if they don't call or text back, walk away. If you learn anything, don't chase somebody who doesn't show you the respect that you give them. Again, it's hard to show my feelings. Willow, She's scratching on my carpet. She doesn't like a cat tower to scratch on. Trying to pull off the wings of angels, trying to stop them from flying. Remember I said they were trying to stop me from moving forward, trying to shut my work down and spirit said, no, that's not happening. Do you not realize that you're working with one of my workers? <laughs> that's not happening. I'll let you go so far because there's a whole series of events that needs to occur 
karma comes back around and then it all comes out, you will not stop her from going because she works for me. Correct for neutrality, remember? They don't have enough money to buy me. Filter your emotions, you're being too aggressive. Filter your emotions, you're being too aggressive. I said yesterday, I think in the reading, that Merlin, my dragonfish, needed a um, carb activated carbon filter. It was, he was getting sick in there. The water was, was well, he just didn't look happy. He looked, looked like he wasn't breathing very well. So I, I, I took his tank apart and I scrubbed everything down and um, gave him a water change and cleared the filter and, and put new activated carbon in his filter to clean his water. You need activate. And that was one of the messages yesterday, right? I dream of you all the time. I dream of you all the time. That was in my dream too this morning. The spirit said that. This one sees you in their dreams all the time. They fight their feelings. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Correct for neutrality on all levels. See other people. Explore. So that might be, right? The, the, the figuring it out and coming to set somebody free. And then they're told to see other people and explore. I want you to know how proud I am of you. I dream of you all the time. See other people explore. Can't remember what the first one was. Oh, you need to filter your emotions. You're being too aggressive. Now, remember, you can be too aggressive with yourself, right? You can, your emotions, you might be, you might lose your shit. Remember that guy in the, in, standing there? I'm gonna kill him. No, you need to filter your emotions because you may be very, very angry. It may not be okay, but there was a reason why everything was allowed to happen and there were lessons that, that were learned. And maybe it was you that needed to learn the lesson, right? So sometimes you're allowed to be aggressive. Like when that little corn rat wasn't gonna get any help, hell had to be raised. <laughs> but at other times, when spirit tells you, your emotions, you're, you're being too aggressive, filter your emotions, it's time to do that, right? So maybe that's what that one was doing. He was holding himself back. He was doing a good job. He would have killed that person for doing what, what he understood they had done, but he was able to hold it together. That's pretty amazing. That's a strong person, right? Okay, it's easier to lose your shit than it is to keep it together. All right, you guys, if anybody would like help with a private reading or any other thing, my website is www.theangelswhisper.com. I hope you're having a great day. It is now 420. That's so funny. Every time I look at the clock for the last, I don't know how many days, it's been 420. Someone's smoking a joint somewhere, not me. 420. Hmm. Remember the whole drug thing that was the problem? Yeah. Okay. Love you guys.